Christ calls us to demonstrate our love in service. Lord, help us to witness to your love in the ways in which we care for others. Let us pray. Loving and eternal God, we gather before you today, <coughs> thankful and grateful that we serve you, our Redeemer, our God of the second chance. You know the depths of our soul and our tendency to stray from you. Remind us that the way we live and the words we speak reveal our faith. Forgive us when we walk in ways that are contrary to your truth. Remind us that in confessing our sins, we can rise from our mistakes to move forward in your forgiving love in order to share that love with others. Transform our minds and reveal your spirit within us. Open us to the generosity of forgiveness and giving second chances. To you be all honor and glory. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today, we continue our worship series, We Rise Together. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we also might walk in newness of life. We read this in Paul's letter to the church at Rome. The Bible is full of stories of redemption, of change, of hope. And we will discover how faith in a risen Jesus can transform our lives for the better here and now. No matter how big or how small we fall, God's outstretched arm is ready to catch us no matter what. I'm hopeful that everybody picked up a paper person today. Everybody get one? Okay, do we have them? Okay, hold them up so I can see. Everybody got their paper person? If you don't, we've got... We've got some more in the in the welcome center. And last week, you guys were probably like, what the heck is Pastor Betty having us do since she's not here, right? <laughs> and last week we asked you to write down any time that you can recall having doubts. Doubts in your faith, doubts in Jesus, doubts in who Jesus has called you to be, whatever the doubts are. We saw from Thomas that doubting is not necessary. Thomas and the other disciples, if we're honest, and we're going to hear about Peter today, who not only doubted, but he denied Christ. So if you didn't get your doubts written down last week, you can do that this week. Or we can talk about what we're doing today, which is denial, right? Think about a time when you have denied Christ in your life. Not that you necessarily didn't believe, but that you did not acknowledge that Jesus, that you know Jesus, and that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. I would suggest that we've all done that at some point in our lives. Maybe it was when we were with friends who were doing some things that maybe weren't in line with Jesus' teaching, and we went along with it. We denied Christ in our lives. So you don't have to put your names on. We're not asking for that. But each week, we're going to be jotting down some things here. And I can't wait for the last week, because there's a big surprise for that last week. So think about it. Jot it down today. You can drop it. There's a tray in the Welcome Center as you go out. Um, and if you need to think about it a week, and you want to write it down next week, that's fine, too. In our scripture reading today, we're going to hear about Peter's redemption from denying Christ. And I'm encouraged, I, I'm given hope as I see how Jesus interacts with 
the one who did not just deny him one time, but denied him three times. So here are these scriptures from both our Old Testament and our New Testament readings today. Good morning. Our first reading is found in the Old Testament, found in the book of Numbers. Please turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 14, beginning with verse 11. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people despise me? And how long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the signs that I have done among them, I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them, and I will, and I will make you a nation of greater and mightier than they. But Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear of it, for in your might you brought up this people from among them, and they will tell the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people, for you, O Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands over them, and you go in front of them, and a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you will kill this people as as one, then the nations who have heard about you will say, it is because the Lord was not able to bring his people into the land, he swore to give them that he, that he has slaughtered them in the wilderness. And now, therefore, let the power of the Lord be great in the way that you promised when you spoke, saying, The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving inequity and transgression but by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the inequity of the parents upon the children to the third and the fourth generation. Forgive the inequity of this people according to the greatness of your steadfast love, just as you have pardoned this people from Egypt even then until now. Then the Lord said, I do forgive, just as you have asked, nevertheless, as I live and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, None of the people who have seen my glory and the signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and yet have tested me these ten times, and have not obeyed me, my voice, shall see the land that I swore to give to their ancestors. None of those who despise me shall see it. The sins are reading from Numbers. Please stand and sing number 600 for him. Wonderful words of life.
Bibles to John, chapter 21, beginning with verse 5. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Verily, truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fashion your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten the belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. For the word of God in Scripture, the word of God among us, the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. We now invite the children to come up and join the message. Serve it to the wrong guy. He was like, yeah, "That tastes pretty good." 
it became a new soft beverage. Now, this one's not being shared because I will not hype you up on caffeine and Johnson. Um, I'm not that, I'm not that evil. But sometimes mistakes are a good, okay kind of thing because they teach you a lesson. Peter learned a very good thing from his mistake. He shouldn't have denied Jesus. Lying to Jesus that he was going to deny him was even a bigger mistake. Because if Jesus was telling you something, you should probably believe it was going to somehow be true and come to fruition, right? But he didn't even accept that. He's like, nope, I'm not going to do it. And yet it still happened. But Jesus wasn't done with Peter because of that denial, because of that mistake. He gave him a second chance. Just like those yucky potatoes were given a second chance, and the bad batter was given a second chance, and the amazing caffeine was given a second chance. Peter was given a second chance. And when given it, he did the right thing. He said the right thing. In the moment where he should have been honest and truthful, he was. Because he doesn't tell this heir, I love you once, or I love you twice. I love you three times. In a way, he kind of got to fix his initial mistake. He denied Jesus three times. He says, I love you three times. He kind of fixed that boo-boo, that mistake he made. God provides us so many opportunities to fix the mistakes. You guys are kids. This is the best age to make mistakes in. And it's okay because it's going to happen. Not one of you is perfect. Not one of these lovely folks in our sanctuary is. And it's actually kind of weird. When you try hard not to make mistakes, I believe this wholeheartedly. They happen even bigger or worse because you were trying so hard for the thing that was going to happen to happen. It's coming anyway. What you do with the mistake is what's important. God provides you every opportunity to learn from it and make it better. And in turn, sometimes what comes of the second chance is what's better if you had done it right the first time. Because you learn something in the process. When we learn from it, it gets ingrained in us better. And hopefully you don't repeat it. Because again, if you accidentally make that mistake, God's going to always be there. He is going to give you not just second chances, but third and fourth and fifth. I did some math this morning and using one of the, the, the lines of the Bible. He gives you 70 times 7. Well, that's 490 tries right there. So you guys have ample opportunity to learn from your mistakes. In the meantime, just don't deny it, and you get that opportunity. Does that make a little bit of sense today? All right, then I've done my good deed. Let's get you lovelies back to your seats so we can keep on going. The one one is the good deed. Law. 
And if you know anything about how the training happened, it kind of starts out as you're trained from little, and then if you show potential, then you go on and you do more study in the synagogue and all of that. If you kind of don't make the cut in the early years, you end up typically going into the business or the trade that your father had. So Peter is described as uneducated and ordinary. Peter is Jewish, and he was working as a fisherman when Jesus called him to his ministry. Do you remember how that story went? Do you remember Peter's call to ministry to follow Jesus? Well, Simon, was, Simon Peter was fishing. And we know Peter's given name was Simon. And they had come in, and they were washing their nets. They hadn't caught a daggone fish all the entire time that they were out. Their nets were empty. And Jesus sat down, and he was teaching. Well, he came to the, the shore side, and the crowds had followed him. And he saw the empty boat, and he asked Simon to row out a little way so that the crowds weren't quite so up on him. And Jesus was teaching. So Peter's the captain of the boat, right? So he's hanging out with Jesus. He doesn't really know who he, who he is initially, but he hears the teaching. And Jesus says to him, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon says, uh, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. Now this was no easy task. This wasn't just like, let me cast my rod. These nets are big and heavy, and it takes a lot of effort. It wasn't a simple thing to just... <clears throat> you know, reel it in and do that. It was a lot more than that. So when they did this, they caught so many fish that the nets were beginning to burst. And others in boats had to come nearby to help them bring the catch in. When Simon Peter, when Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and he said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Everybody that was there was amazed by this catch. Jesus said to Simon, his response was, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. Do you think Simon had any clue what that meant? No. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and they followed him. So Peter following of Jesus was pretty instant. He had this miraculous catch of fish happen. Something was going on, and he wanted to know more about it. So he left his livelihood and his family behind, and he followed Jesus. But it's not like he never saw his family again, right? Because remember, Peter also witnesses the miracle of Jesus curing his mother-in-law, who was suffering from a high fever. And then Peter also witnesses Jesus feeding the 5,000. And after that miracle of feeding the 5,000, there's an account in the Gospel of Matthew where they're back down on the Sea of Galilee, they're on a boat, and they're waiting for Jesus to return from having gone away to pray. The water's rough. And what makes the water rough at the Sea of Galilee is on the, on the edge, there, there are these two mountain ranges. So when the wind comes down between those mountain ranges, it's like a wind tunnel. And that's blowing across the lake. So they've got some white caps happening on the lake. And in the midst of the rough sea, they see someone walking on the water coming to them. They're afraid, and they think they're seeing a ghost until Jesus calls out and identifies himself. And Peter, Peter doesn't necessarily believe it's Jesus. 
And he responds, he says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So Jesus calls Peter to him, and as Peter steps out on the water, he gets a little panicky. And he starts to sink. But what does Jesus do? Do you remember? Jesus reaches out to Peter as he is doubting. And he says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and all those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. So Peter has a lot of experience with Jesus, a lot of times of seeing Jesus work miracles. Jesus gives Simon the name Cephas, which is from the Aramaic word Kappa, which means rock. And the Greek translation of Kappa is Petros, and that's how we get to Peter. Okay? So there's a little bit of a, a language trail here. So despite Peter's show of doubt walking on water, Jesus later singles out Peter as crucial to his mission. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus asks the disciples, he says, Who do you say that I am? And Peter speaks for all of them because Peter is a leader. He speaks for all of them and he says, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So we have multiple incidents or multiple examples of Peter saying, you are the Son of God. Jesus, recognizing Peter's faith, blesses him and says, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So this is the relationship that Peter has with Jesus. Belief, doubt, faith that's growing in spite of doubt, right? Doubts are part of how our faith grows, and I believe our DS last week talked quite a bit about how doubt, doubting doesn't make you bad. Doubting is a way of going deeper to grow in your faith. At the Last Supper, when Jesus said that all of his disciples would desert him, Peter asserts, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. He was pretty confident of himself at that point. And within six hours, Peter would come to regret those brave words. Jesus' response was, Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, once you have turned back, will strengthen your brothers. And Peter didn't hear any of that. What Peter said is, I'm ready to go with you to prison or to death. And Jesus says to him, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. Did you hear in Jesus' statement to Peter that I have prayed for you? I have no idea what he's talking about. It's something about. All right, we're going to try this one. Where Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. But Jesus knows that it's going to. And he says, once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Right? And Peter isn't getting it. Until later that evening. When they're in the garden, 
and he sees Jesus dragged away by a mob, this mob mentality. And they led Jesus to the high priest's house, and Peter is following at a distance. He wasn't in the mix saying, he, he had already tried the old, let's cut off the ear of the, the servant, right? And Jesus said, that's the way you gotta go. So Peter follows at a distance. And he's in the courtyard. And there's a female servant. Sees him around the fire. And she says, this man also was with him. Peter says, woman, I do not know him. And then a little later, someone else on seeing him says, you're also one of them. And Peter said, man, I'm not. I'm not. And about an hour later still, another kept insisting, surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And in Luke's gospel, it's recorded that Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had told him. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and he wept bitterly. You see, we can know who Jesus is and still deny him. Peter believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Peter believed that Jesus was Lord. Peter believed that Jesus was, is the son of the living God. And Peter denied Jesus. Why do you think Peter denied Jesus? Fear. Fear. I think fear drives a lot of what we do. And you see the t-shirts, right, that say faith over fear. That's a great bumper sticker. It's a great t-shirt slogan. But let's get real. Fear drives a lot of how we act and the choices that we make. So I give you this nugget of scripture, and it's from the prophet Joshua. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It's great to say be strong and courageous. That's kind of like the the modern day version of just suck it up or just do it, right? But the important thing in, in this scripture is that God is with us wherever we go. We depend on our own fear. Fear can rule. We lean on and we truly know that God is with us wherever we go. That is when we can be strong and courageous. So, we're going to get back to Jesus and Peter. Jesus appeared to the disciples in Jerusalem in the upper room on that Easter Sunday evening. And again a week later to the disciples and Thomas, and you heard that story last week. And that's what brings us to our scripture that you heard read today. Peter is now back home in Capernaum. He has left Jerusalem. He's gone home to Capernaum, along with Thomas, who got a bad rap for being called a doubter because they all doubted. Nathaniel, James, John, and two other disciples. And he's going fishing again. He's back out on the water. 
His friends go with him. And how many fish did they catch? How many did they catch this time? None. Y'all weren't listening for me when Jimmy was reading. <laughs> Children, have you no fish? And they answered him, No. We didn't catch anything tonight. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. And what did they do? They cast it the net. And they had another haul of fish that they brought in. But when they got to the beach, Jesus already had a fire going and already had some fish on the fire and was had fixed them breakfast. So they sat down around the fire and they ate some of the fish that Jesus had provided and they ate some of the fish that they had caught with some bread. And Jesus said, come and have breakfast. Did they ask who he was? No. They knew who he was. And he gave up bread and fish and they were having breakfast. And to me, this story is eerily similar to Peter's call story. Right? He had been out fishing and there had been no fish to be caught until he did as Jesus asked him to do. So we're kind of in this, okay, he's denied Jesus, but like what's going to happen because it kind of sounds like when he met him the first time, let's hear the rest of the story. So Jesus has a conversation with Peter in which he asks him, do you love me? And Peter's answer is yes. Yes. And yes again. And after Peter has declared his love for Jesus, three times Jesus says, follow me. Peter, who doubted and denied Jesus. Peter, whom Jesus showed many signs and miracles, and still he doubted and denied. Jesus reached out his hand to Peter when he doubted. Jesus redeemed Peter by asking the question, Do you love me? Peter rose from the doubt and denial of Jesus and continued to be a leader of the apostles and of the early church after Jesus ascended to heaven. Peter's transformation from doubter and denier to rock to the leader it was not a linear process. It wasn't step one, step two, step three, okay, now I'm a leader, right? Peter believed, and he, it was back and forth. There was doubt that came in. There was denial that came in. Peter's transformation was not linear, and our transformation into followers of Jesus into the followers that Jesus would have us to be is not linear either. We will have doubts. And we may even go so far as to deny Jesus in our lives. And yet, Jesus is always there asking, do you love me? It is by God's grace that we are redeemed. It is by God's grace it, and it is God's grace that heals when we are so sick with ourselves for the choices that we've made. It is God's grace that heals them. Peter wept. He was sick to death that he had denied Jesus. And it's God's grace that reaches out to us. Jesus knows it is hard to be a follower Jesus knows that. Take heart in the encouragement that the prophet Joshua, actually Joshua, he was a prophet, but kind of not really. 
Take, take, take encouragement, take hope in what God told Joshua when he said, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. You go. You see, at the end of the scripture reading that Jimmy read this morning, there was a foreshadowing of what was going to happen to Peter. We don't hear all of the details, but tradition tells us that Peter went on to Rome, spreading the good news of who Jesus is. And it was in Rome that he was martyred. He was crucified. His arms were spread. And tradition tells us that he was crucified upside down because he was not as good as he was not worthy to be crucified in the way that Jesus was. This happened roughly 30 years, 35 years after Jesus was crucified. So Peter, Peter who denied Christ, did indeed follow Christ to the cross in spite of the doubts, in spite of the denials. And God was with him every step of the way. So my prayer for you is that you take to heart that no matter how hard it gets when we're following Jesus, when we're loving on our neighbors who maybe aren't so lovable, when we're serving, when we're offering compassion and forgiveness, to offer forgiveness can be a very hard thing to do. But God is with us every step of the way. Every unlinear step of the way, right? The ups, the downs, the step forward, the two steps back. God is with us. And God is constantly reaching out God's arm, saying, come to me. Follow me. So, on your paper person, take a moment to jot down when you have doubted and or when you have denied Christ. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for being the God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. We thank you that you're constantly calling us to you. That even when we believe, yet stumble, you are there to call us out on our stumbling, but to also reach out a hand. God, we thank you for your grace, for your everlasting love that never fails. We pray that we may be strong and courageous. That we do not fear because we know you are with us wherever we go. Wherever you lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we stand and sing Amazing Grace.
using number 887 in the hymnal. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. love and forgiveness invites us to love and forgive others. Here is an opportunity to let God's light show through us as we give to causes or ministries that uplift, unite us in community, and offer renewal through second chances. You are invited to place your offering in the box at the back of the church. If you missed placing your offering in the box, there will be one there for you to use as you leave today. For those of you worshiping with us from home, your offering may be mailed in or given electronically using our website. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them in gratitude and praise to the one who gave his whole self for our redemption.
pray for our con the congregations in our cooperative parish that we add the Bryan Community Church to our prayers. Other joys. Kaylee, you have a dream in them. My grandma's back home now, so I want to give God all the praise and glory for that. Amen. Amen. Margaret is home. All because of God. John's brother Arlo is out of the hospital, able to walk and act. Wow, Arlo has come home from the hospital as well and is able to walk and doing well. Again, we give praise and honor to God for that healing. What are our other joys? How about some concerns? What's weighing on our hearts? For your niece and nephews. I'm going to pray for Hazel as she continues to recover. The leaders of this council. We want to pray for the leaders of our country and leaders in the world as they interact with the leaders of our country. <clears throat> Other concerns. I ask you to keep my dad in prayer as he's going through another round of chemotherapy. This weekend, next week. Lynn? I, I guess it's more of a joy than it is a prayer. Uh, Marshall Hill's doing really well. He's home. Uh, you know, he uh, has to go to uh, uh, get uh, blood transfusions every so often, but uh, uh, he's doing really well. And he asked us if we would mind babysitting and taking him to breakfast for lunch one of these days. So. I know he's doing better. Amen. Again, we give God praise and thanksgiving for that healing. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious, gracious and loving God, we come to you with joyful hearts, giving you all the honor and glory for the mighty works in this world. We give you thanks for the healing for those that are in need in body, mind, and spirit. We pray that your guidance and your wisdom will lead our nation's leaders. We give you thanks for new life, both new birth and new life. God, we thank you for your transforming power. And together, in the community of faith, we pray in the words that Jesus gave his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. We have a few announcements before we sing our closing song, our closing hymn. Um, there are several team meetings coming up this week and next week. So if you are on the leadership team, SPRC or trustees, please check your bulletins and for the times and locations. Um, our next announcement is that our flower bed crew is, we have winter, so we didn't have to do anything with our flower bed at the corner of Maine and Pennsylvania Avenue, but with spring fast approaching, sometimes I think it's here, but maybe not quite yet, um, we're going to do a cleanup on Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock. Um, if you are able to help or have any questions, please see Suzanne and Judy. Judy's up here. Suzanne, if you'll hold your hand up. Um, but that's Wednesday at 8 o'clock. And then Thursday, we have our table worship, our in the third, on the third Thursday. And I'm excited to hear the continuation of the conversation about how, as different generations, the things that are similar and the things that make us a little different and how we can all work together to glorify the kingdom of God. 
Um, the youth will be gathering on next Sunday at 5 o'clock for a video and board game night here in the upper room. And last but not least, taco dinner. Yep. Was that Coop that said that? Taco dinner. Yep. Taco dinner, April 27th. That is a fundraiser for the youth to go to Camp Joy. So um, if you can help out, if you can't help out, but you want to come and eat, come and eat. Um, it's, it's always a good time together. So with that, we're going to stand and sing our closing hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus.